Hello, this is Bruno Pelletier-Backer. I'm going to walk you today through this chord study for Giant Steps. It's called Giant Steps number two. Uh, let me play it first with the metronome, and then uh, I'll walk you through it chord by chord. One, two, three, four. Okay, so that's that. Um, so make sure you look at the, um, the diagrams. You know, there's uh, this PDF that you can download. So obviously take a look at it. Um, so the first chord is B major seven, going to D seven over A. So this is D nine with A in the bass, and then G major seven. Um, the bass works down like this in, in whole steps. Now, one thing I, I want to point out, and you will notice that throughout the, the whole study, basically, I may arbitrarily pick a chord, so I pick this chord here for the B major 7, and then I had to find a D dominant chord of which the top note was close enough. And by close enough, I'm always thinking a whole step, up or down. If I have a common tone, I can use a common tone, but, um, and you'll see there will be a few common tones throughout the study. But essentially for you know, good voice leading purposes, I always make sure that the, uh, the top note uh, never travels for more than a whole step. So I have this B major seven down to this D nine, so the, the top note is only traveling by a whole step, same thing step here into the G major. However, for my B flat 9, it's a common tone on top, and then another common tone with the E flat major 7. Still the common tone on the A minor, I have the 11th on top, I have the root of the D chord on top, and, and then the G. So the we're talking the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, seven seven chords in a row will have that D note. Okay, so that's the kind of little details that you, you may want to, first of all, notice and also uh, put to use. Okay, so we were A minor seven, D seven, so the second line, G major seven to B flat nine, and resolving into this E flat major seven. This is not a chord that we, that I use very much, I would say, but here it just felt like it was a, a good thing coming from from this B flat nine, right? Um, my third finger gets to stay on the same string, same note, same string. See how things move pretty nicely. Now my first finger is playing this E flat, which now will become the thirteenth of my F sharp dominant, and then it becomes then the third of the B major seven. And then it's going to be the seventh of the F minor. Now I'm gonna move up. So this chord I'm calling it B flat nine, but you might recognize it as a D half diminished. So if you were playing a B flat bass, you would hear a B flat nine, but we don't really even need, need the bass. Okay, this sounds like a B flat chord with no root and then resolve to this E flat add nine, uh, the slash nine, it basically means add nine. So I have E flat, G, B flat,
flat, so just an E flat triad to which we add the F note, which is the ninth. And the next uh, two five ones are the same. So that's F minor to B flat to E flat. Then I move to A minor to D9 to G9, or I should say G uh, add nine. And then same thing again from C sharp to F sharp to, to the B chord. So the pattern started low enough on the neck and I was able to reuse it three times in a row. Not something we want to do necessarily all the time, but it feels like it worked out pretty well here. Um, now, so I end up here on this B chord, and then the X means that I'm going to shift my bass onto the sixth string, and that I am a half step below the root of my F minor chord, and then going down chromatically into the B flat, 7 flat 5 which we could also think of as, a, as an E7 flat 5, and then resolve into that E flat major 7. And then walk back to the, the 2 5 that would send us back to the top. Okay, so that's a, that's a simple enough chord progression. Um, it is important to work on, on chord study, studies, particularly for this song, really, because if you think about it, Everybody's always concerned about soloing over giant steps. The, the big challenge is always you know, making the changes, but um, don't forget that as a guitar player, you need to be able to play the chords. And, um, and then if you, if you are car careful about the harmony that you, you are using for your chords, that same harmony will carry on um, with your your solos you know all the notes all the nice notes that you might be using uh, on your chords you will hear them and in in which case you will start using them when you improvise so those two go hand in hand um so i have a whole bunch of those studies for giant steps if you uh you know i'll put a link down to my website and you know you can uh you can um, see what's out there some of them are free some of them are available for purchase but they, you know, they're pretty cheap, if I may say. So um, take a look there, and uh, and I'll see you uh, some other time. Take care.